Welcome back to another episode of Tech Times Daily, where we dive into the world of tech and everything related. I'm your host for today, Chris Short, and joining me as always is the ultimate tech head and anime enthusiast, uh, Christian Tejeres. Christian, what's up, man? How's it going? Happy Monday. Well, good. How's it going? Good, good, good. Well, we've got a very topical topic. Topical topic. It's a topical topic, right? <laughs> It's election time in the U.S. Um, it's ramping up a few other places in the world as well. Um, and today's topic talk is it's 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 focused kind of in two places. But I think this I think this this issue uh, is much broader than just these two countries. Right. This is this is something that as it moves forward and precedents are set, um, things could change, which We'll, we'll discuss if these changes are good or not. But let's start out with the with the content first, right? This is coming from Aldon, one of our writers over at Tech Times. Um, Facebook's news content blocking negatively affects political discourse, claims uh, new studies. Uh, Facebook's recent blocking of news contents in certain countries is now reportedly proven to be negatively affecting political discussions on the platform. Uh, some studies suggest that memes are now overtaking political discussions. One of these nations is Canada, which has emerged as a focal point of Facebook's conflict with governments that have passed or are debating legislation compelling Internet behemoths, mainly Google and Meta, which is the owner of Facebook, to compensate media outlets for links to stories that appear on their platforms. Now, Facebook claims that news has little commercial value so it has restricted news sharing in Canada rather than charge for it. Um, two unpublished studies indicate that the barring of news links has caused significant and unsettling changes in the way Canadian Facebook users interact with political material. Now, do you think Facebook, Meta, let's just say Meta altogether, because, you know, that's that's who's making the decision. Do you think Meta is kind of just like like they said right there's no commercial value so it's like why are we even let's just remove this one cancerous topic from our platform yeah it's it's something that has been going on for quite some time now and it is actually gonna affect the elections more i guess in the u.s right Right. The the entire talk about how having uh politics within social media platforms and particularly news. It it is in terms of freedom of speech, I, I guess it's a bit different back in Canada. And also I think another country that's actually uh within this scope is actually Australia, right? So yeah. they handle politics differently and come and also when it comes to their freedom of speech. My question for this is, are, are we monetizing information now? Are we make, putting information behind a paywall when it comes to actually filtering these kinds of things? Because I, I, I can understand political discourse uh, already is being put in a vacuum when it comes to these social media pa platforms. Right. So do we suddenly control that with these type of uh, processes or these policies yeah i don't i don't i mean i feel like i feel like this is an issue because you know again this is limiting kind of freedom of speech right like if i want to share with my friends and family on facebook an article that that i find interesting then should i not be able to do that or is it up to the, you know, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I, I've had this happen. I'll be like, oh, shit, look, this is crazy. And then I share it with people. Well, and it's not always political. I'm just saying in general, right? Like, um, it, if, if, if it just so happens to be political, now I can't share it because, you know, it's people want to charge you or whatever. Yeah, and I guess in a, in a greater scope, like, in in terms of culture and what we have now, people usually look to social media in terms of 
checking out the news, what's happening mm -hmm. in the country that they're in. Like, social media has become the bulletin board for everyone at this point. Like, that's the reason why we're having these issues when it comes to opinions. Like, it's hard to discern now whether anything on well, what you read online is true. But the problem with that is when it comes to social media, if your family or your loved ones actually share it, you tend to believe it because they, in a sense, right. they're, they're not going to be sending you, you, you think they're not going to be sending you bad information because everything is all about concern, right? right? So I think that blurs the line when it comes to what's going to be the dangers of, of these types of things. But I can understand if there are any apprehensions regarding the government actually controlling what you can share on your social media platforms, right? Yeah, and I, I think it's controlled. It's... uh. It's like controlled by proxy, right? They're not saying, hey, don't share this or don't don't make it shareable. Like we don't want we don't want people to be able to do this. They're not saying that directly, but they are saying, you know what? If people are sharing these things, then we want you to pay the news outlet. And then of course, Meta's like, we don't make enough money off of this. So we're just not even going to put it here. And a byproduct of forcing trying to force them to compensate the you know the the authors or the, the company um they're actually getting what they want which is no political content on social media yeah and if you think about it if you remove the, the ability for people to share on social media right now when it comes to these uh when it comes to politics how do you think politicians will actually campaign at that point Right. Right. That's yeah. I mean, and discourse, you know, negatively affects political discourse. Um, I feel like. I feel like there wasn't a study required to know this, like if you can't share news, political news. Then obviously political discourse is going to be negatively affected. Like when of has the word like when has the word discourse been a bad thing for everyone? Like when has this oh, actually started? When 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 soft people gained control. That's when discourse became a problem. Yeah, the problem with the with the lack of discourse is like usually when you only tend to hear one side, you yeah. basically turn off any form of judgment within right. yourself on, on how you choose your politicians on right. how you choose your policies blinders are going to be set for this one no I, I can't actually criticize canada and australia for doing this this is their country like yeah it's a it's a free world but if you so suddenly far. apply this to the greater part of the u.s where freedom of speech has been pretty much the very foundation that the country was built from, mm. it would be a different story. Right. And, you know, and I want to bring up another point to you, uh, see what you think. Like, okay, so I personally, um, I use Facebook for mostly family and friends. Like, there's not many people on, I don't have many people on my timeline that I don't know personally. Um you know, or that I haven't met at some point in my life. Whereas Instagram, it's the opposite. Most people I follow are entertaining, you know, uh, not that my friends and family aren't entertaining, but you know what I mean? Like they're entertaining um, on purpose. Uh, and then, so I don't really want like, I don't want to have politi political discussions with, with family. Um, friends is fine or whatever. And I also don't want to see entertainers. I don't care about their political views. So for me, in my personal opinion, I feel that Facebook is for family, Instagram's for entertainment, and maybe X is good for political discourse. So do you think like there should, it, has there, has there been, is it just me or are these divisions kind of naturally happening? The, the problem with social media is, and, and I do agree that political discourse is needed. I might be contradicting sure. what I said earlier before. But but then again, 
not a lot of people know politics and those that actually don't know it when they join a discourse usually it gets gets messed up yeah quite a bit like True. it causes a lot of confusions i think that's a very issue when it comes to having social media and people having their own opinions like not a lot of people know a lot right but a lot and of people we, talk a lot we can agree that people are an intelligent in a sense but not a people not a lot of people actually know a lot and some people you're gonna be you're gonna need to be a uh good judge of character before you can find someone or an opinion that you can actually trust online now if you suddenly put everything all of these people in a blender everything is going to be messed up i think that's a major issue when it comes to discourse on social media platforms when it comes to how people perceive receive and receive these news articles mm -hmm. i think that's the issue of the canadian government but another thing that i'm looking at and why this is happening is because of advertising money from the news sites right so that that's another thing that we could consider why did this actually need it that time because the government needs to rein it in yeah so, you know and i i feel like political discourse is i feel like if you well i guess i mean i feel like if you if you know and or you believe that what you're doing is correct or ethical or in with the best intentions then political discourse doesn't frighten you yeah. but if you're trying to if you're trying to slip some shit by the public then you probably don't want people talking about it too much because they're going to figure you out yeah but the main, main issue here is like there is a saying that everyone is a hero in their, their own story so <laughs> everyone online right. who actually posts a comment actually share something feels like the main character yeah they, they believe it so no one wants to be wrong in these things that's why i said in this course online is actually going to be an endless discussion right 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 yeah and you know I, I think the point here is you know um how much if too much dependence do we have on like Facebook, right? Like, so what political discourse is negatively affected on Facebook? That's not the only way we communicate. Is the, is the policy just for Meta or is it completely for every social media platform in Canada and Australia? I think right now it's basically Facebook. Um, that's kind of, because they, they actually have a um it's kind of like a fact check type thing when you when you try to share a news article in canada that pops up and says uh people in canada can't see this content uh what's the rest of it it's something um in so response to yeah so basically in, they're just netflix right <laughs> so yeah in response to canadian government legislation news content can't be shared whenever you try to share a news story this isn't even all political it's like if you try to you know i don't know if if they can share a tech times article in canada i think it's 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 very much the same thing that the streaming are doing when it comes to country by country basis and what they could actually show right well so i mean i think pretty much it yeah I mean, this is this is localized to news content. So, like pictures of your, you know, your 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 kid's birthday party, no problem. Um, and I would imagine um, your very own political opinion, you know, not a problem. Yeah, it's just you know, out. It's just outsourced material that you can't share. I don't even know why we're having this discussion because Facebook has a setting there where you could actually just share to your friends, right? <laughs> and not share right. it publicly. <laughs> so th there are there are features there that actually limit the sharing. It's just gonna be people's judgment and what they do with it. It's like <laughs> it's not like it's it's not available for you to not only share with your family. True, true, true. And one more thing I wanted to, to point out here in this story is uh that how news okay so we'll we'll go to a quote here from 
Taylor Owen, who is the founding director of McGill University Center for Media, Technology, and Democracy. And he worked on one of the studies. He said the news being talked about in political groups is being replaced by memes. The ambient presence of journalism and true information in our feeds, the signals of reliability that were there, that's gone. <laughs> memes is memes are basically the internet. <laughs> right? Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, I mean, memes are our our or this new generation's funnies, right? You know, in the newspaper. Eventually, like over the past couple of years, politics has become a meme in itself. So, yeah. But do you do you see something like this moving into the U.S. You think, or other countries in the world? Hell no. In the U.S., or we still have other issues regarding TikTok. Like it's still going to be a state-to-state basis. If you're going to be implementing this, you're going to have to adopt the same principles. Like everyone there knows that it's uh, th- this type of policy is not going to fly with people. Like I don't know what regarding statistics, but because I think the U.S. consumes most of the news, right? You're high consumer oh. when it comes to news articles based on what people are interested in. And right. the U.S. are major, majorly po- politics-centric when it comes to news. Yeah, true, true, it, true. That's the, the type of content that actually sells to advertisers that gets views. Especially in this age where people actually, everyone actually think there are they are politicians without a degree. like Right. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's that's also kind of an issue, right? Everyone's a, everyone's an expert now. Um, you know, there, I think there was a there was a quick second between the, at the beginning of the inform information era, right? Or the information revolution, right? Where now it's just information. The first few minutes were great, and now we're saturated, and nobody knows what to believe, and people are arguing about things that's not even true, and arguing points coming from two different perspectives with both with misleading information and it's all because we're just so incredibly saturated yeah, and what are the dangers and why they actually implemented this i'm quite curious uh i i think they just wanted um compensation <laughs> like that's basically the whole thing like if you're if we can if you can share news articles cuz i mean I guess it's it's kind of similar to like pre pre social media, right? Pre internet, even like um, if you wanted the news, then you pretty much had to you either had to buy the newspaper or you had to watch the television program, which in turn, you know, advertisements like the 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 news agencies received all this comp- all this compensation. Now. <clears throat> You know, maybe it's not as lucrative if if it's just shared, shared, shared. Like I would have thought of something much different than this. Like, a, in a sense, like I think it would have been much more reasonable if they are they just allow the news to actually push through. Like, if these are reputable news sites, why would you bother censoring them or filtering them out? Right. Like, it makes no sense. It really doesn't. It's uh, and it's it's also. Canada. Like, Canada's been in a downward spiral for the last five or six years when it comes to legislation and government overreach. Like they're 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 slowly, maybe not even that slow, but they're gradually uh falling into a pit of just absolute ridiculousness. Like we've been coddling these this generation and this society like sheeps, right? For mm. over the past couple of decades now. That's the reason why we have partisanship when it comes to these things. Like people are no longer loyal to principles and ideas. They're just loyal to a party. <laughs> I think that's the reason why, why this is happening is that we, we've been trying to control what people are trying to look online. Right. Like news sites being censored, I don't get that. Or not being shown, being shared. Like if it's a reputable news site like CNN or 
right. MSNBC, or I'll give Fox the benefit of the doubt. Like these sites have the these networks or these news sites have names. Mm -hmm. So are are these kinds of websites or content their content from these sites not being are not able to be shared on Canadian platforms or just yeah, sites all. within Canada at all? Uh, in 2023, uh, the Canadian Senate enacted the Online News Act, which requires digital companies to compensate media outlets for items they post. When they did that, Meta deleted all news content from Facebook and Instagram in Canada. Wow. Yeah. And it's it's just all about compensation. Meta doesn't, I mean, I guess it just comes down to business, you know. Um, they say pay us. Meta says it doesn't make enough money to pay you. So we'll just remove it. And for once, I mean, maybe I'm on Meta's side on this one. And I'm sending the question back to you. What do you think would happen if this was implemented in the U.S.? Or whether the U.S. would actually try to do this? Um, I think there would be a huge uproar. If they try, because like I said in the beginning, this is a round the way way I think of censoring social media. Like it's not a, it's not a direct censorship. It's not saying, hey, we don't want you, we don't want news on your platform because you know people start talking and like if we can if we can remove this one aspect of kind of interconnectivity when it comes to political discourse or discourse in general, then they have kind of controlled you know what i mean it's just because social media is where now people go to talk right like this is what happens you you share something you post something people argue people discuss whatever canada it seems like to me canada's like we don't want that we would rather it we we want this to stick to the barber shops and the diners and you know these places not where the where the reach is limited your influence Let's say you're very well spoken. You're very well um, informed. You may be able to influence hundreds, if not thousands of people on social media. Whereas if you're not allowed to have this conversation on social media, then what can you influence the five or six people you see every day? So, yeah. like I said, I, this would never fly in the U.S. because it would immediately be be tagged with a anti-democracy anti-freedom freedom of speech um anti-freedom period move by whichever side brought this up this yeah, would not apply in the u.s it would also give further ammunition for certain political parties to actually use this yeah but, i mean it's, it's, it's not a straightforward tactic it's a very politician-like move yeah, in all honesty, I would rather be shared the news than find out the political leanings of my relatives. Like I would, I don't want the opportunity to think any less of them. Well, I think, um, I think Canada tried to help the news organizations. Apparently, their revenue has been falling for a few years, so Canada tried it. And I think Meta, as an American company with, I feel like, ingrained values, right, Zuckerberg, I mean, I'm sure, you know, there's, there's just certain things that as Americans we appreciate, we try not to take for granted, and like freedom of speech, and um, like you can't, like Canada was kind of overstepping and maybe a very canadian government like way and then the american company said no it could you know just be as simple as a culture clash at this point because it passed it went into law in canada so apparently a lot of people feel that it's okay what does the at canadian least in the people government actually think of this hmm? what does the canadian people actually think of this you know i don't know i don't have any information on whether they yeah, if there is, or if any of our audiences are actually from Canada, uh, please write in the comments uh, your opinion regarding this. We're quite interested to find out what you think. Yeah, it's um, because you know I've never liked the the uh, you know the generalization of you know 
like no matter where it is, you know, like let's say North Korea or even Russia or anywhere, you know, uh, America, like don't judge Americans or anyone based on what their government does. Cause that's not the people. Do you think Facebook should have started with the Netflix uh, model, like different, the different content for different countries? Or do you think this wasn't, this isn't, this wasn't an, uh, avoidable for them? Uh, I mean, I think that's not a bad idea, you know, because cultures are different, you know, what, you know, like some, I don't, I can't think of any extreme, uh, examples, but, you know, I'm sure there's things that are very normal in some countries that we, as people not from that culture, really don't probably want to see or You know, I'm much more surprised about this that it's not Twitter. Well, I think they they know they can't really. Twitter's not Twitter. Don't care, <laughs> right? Well, here, okay, here we go. I found uh, what do you find? It says a new survey suggests that most Canadians feel new. This is from BNN Bloomberg. Um. I guess this is a Canadian website. Uh, a new survey suggests that most Canadians feel news should be free and accessible for anyone, while also believing that media will find other ways to make money. Um, so it is a liberal government online news act. Will force digital giants such as Google to compensate media outlets for content that is shared or otherwise repurposed on their platforms. So it looks like most about three out of four resident or three out of every about three out of every four respondents said they were aware of the online news act, formerly known as Bill C-18, with 30 with 34 percent of the respondents saying the law is a good thing to help media outlets that compete for advertising dollars with tech giants. Uh, yeah. And in response, Meta removed everything from uh, Canada. Overall, 59% of respondents agreed the company should restore access to news, and only 12% agreed that Meta should be allowed to protest the legislation. Um, the ex executive vice president at Leger, I guess, it is sort of uh, Christian Bork. It is sort of interesting because there isn't much opposition to the bill itself. There's opposition to the fact that they would not get their news whenever they want, wherever they want. Okay, so, I mean, I guess... That's a logical way to look at it, right? Like, yeah, of course you should be able to get news and news should be free. Um, but they also understand that news out outlets should be paid, compensated. So the, these are news networks, right? That have their own online platforms. Mm. The news being shared from that. <clears throat> I was kind of wondering, there are stations, news networks, that are, uh, um, TV networks that are actually backing these news, right? Like CBC right. for Canada. Like, at what percentage does CBC actually get their income from their news? Like if it's just one percent, they could easily take a hit. Right. I think it's uh, it could be it could be they could just uh, take the uh, hit for that one. It could just be a cash grab. Like I want every single cent that I deserve, and then Meta's like just like fuck y'all, man. Like this has this issue has been in the U.S. lately, right? When it comes to the news channels and their networks, my like usually media or, or news broadcasts are considered free. I yeah. think I can't remember back in the days, makes me feel old, but there are no advertising during news broadcasts because there shouldn't be. It's a public service. It should definitely be a public service. It, it... And it doesn't even amount to a 10% of the, uh, a station's income. Right. So taking a bit of a hit for one percent of your profit, I don't know. Like, it is their company; they can do what they want. But I feel it's a bit kind of scummy, yeah, on their end. It is. I mean, it's like, like yeah, I agree with you one hundred percent. You know, take the hit, and at least you're, you're, you're still in the, you know, in the mix, right? Like now, you're not right. even in the mix, bro. You're not even on Facebook or Instagram anymore. So that definitely didn't help. 
And it did change the perception of what an audience is because before it's your audience. Now they're your consumers. Right. Because that's all very, of a sudden money, money is actually involved now. Yeah. Well, it's all about the money, you know. Yeah. The audience who, yeah. But, you know, your exposure, like exposure is great, right? Like even if, if I don't make, uh, or if this channel or whatever doesn't make one red cent, <laughs> from from being shared on Facebook or Instagram, you know, like if 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 the only revenue that comes from is YouTube, then that's okay because how do you bring people to YouTube? You know what I mean? Like how if 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 we're not on if we're not exposed as much as possible, then obviously we're limiting ourselves. So these news organizations, maybe this backfired on them. Maybe they didn't expect for Meta to just not comply yeah and actually further the point that it, it turned every not just uh it turned networks not just into uh advertising machines but also political bully pulpits so yeah yep i think that's basically what the canadian government is trying to do you know, I, I think they, I think they, they took like a leap of faith to try to help out their, their media outlets, and it just didn't work. And of course, I think one plus one equals two. Most days, if you can't have political content on the world's, arguably the world's, one of the world's largest social media platforms, then yes, political discourse will be negatively affected. I was in terms of the censorship of the social media stuff. I was more thinking they should have been leaning on this over sexualization of minors on Bro, platforms anything, rather than this. Yeah, I could right? really give a shit let what what Trudeau's doing when there's craziness going on in the world and it's all over social media. No one is actually considering that as a as a as a discussion point for anything. Like I've right. been waiting for that discussion to actually happen. Like I don't even know the age of people online anymore. Oh, you? Yeah, no idea. Right. Mm. Which also poses the question: Like, I think that's a major reason for these news to be misconstrued by people because you don't even know the age of people that are consuming these news. Right. So, in a sense, like. If it works for Canada, it works for them. But I really don't think it's going to work in the U.S. No, not in the U.S. for sure. And I guess it works for the Canadian government. I don't think the media outlets are happy about it after all. I don't think Canadians in general appreciate, you know, having their ability to 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 share whatever you want on your... That's supposed to be your page. Remember MySpace? Does anyone was, still remember MySpace now? <laughs> No, I mean, but yeah, but not just MySpace, but like the, the entire name or, you know, the idea behind the name, right? This was your space on the internet. Right, this was my space. Internet was a huge thing, a brand new thing. It's huge. And you have your own page that's dedicated just to you, your likes, your interests, your friends, your ideas. And it's not that anymore. I haven't used MySpace before. Is there a concept of sharing on MySpace? Bro, I don't know. I had I had a farm. Yeah. You had and, a farm uh, on MySpace? Were oh, there yeah. games there back then? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. The games on MySpace, yeah. There was Farmville, uh there's all kinds of games on there. Um I thought Farmville was on Facebook. Oh, that was Facebook. Right. What did MySpace have? Music. I know they had music. You go into the page and it would play. You could you could set up your 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 music player. Um, you could set your top friends, which became this entire societal thing. Like, you know, people get pissed off at you if they're not like top eight or whatever it was. Uh, yeah, MySpace was like a. It was that first iteration kind of thing to where it's just like became over like you could you could you could customize the entire page you could have fonts and colors and backgrounds it became very <laughs> it was very much personable 
And Facebook suddenly became that one friend that you have who overshares stuff. <laughs> yeah. But you know, they and but you know, the point I wanted to make was that idea of I guess maybe it was a uh I guess we could kind of see it as a leftover um or maybe a crossing into where we are now where everything is so public, right? Where, you know, if you choose to be, right? You can post everything, anything, you videos all day, you show when you eat, you show where you go, you show what you wear, you show what you do for work, like you, you show everything nowadays. But in the beginning, it was more of like uh you know, I want my, this is my place. This is my thing. This is, and now it's like, I want to share here. I want to share it. Like, I want to be all over this thing rather than seclude myself in one area. Yeah. Like, it's funny like to think of... that every country has different priorities when it comes to like one country actually prioritizes the encapsulation of AI into a regulation. Mm. One country regarding uh, freedom of the uh, freedom of the press, information and speech, but all of them are actually all tied in to social media. Well, yeah, you know, I think everything, everything nowadays is social media, man. It's like some some form or another, you know. And the ones we we rarely talk about, like you know, your Reddit's, um, you know, these are all. Uh... Reddit is basically the WWE of the internet. <laughs> like everyone's well, I don't just even understand. each other there. So <laughs> I don't even understand Reddit. That's one I don't get. Reddit is much more really fun. Good. Like if you want to see real people, go to Reddit. That's basically how people really act. Right. Yeah, okay. Yeah, maybe it's like the yeah, the dark alley of the internet <laughs> of social media. <laughs> yeah. Or the overly you know, dramatic but blurs the yeah. line between reality. That's basically yeah. Reddit. But yeah, all right. Well, that wraps up today's edition of Tech Times Daily. Uh, yeah, we'll be back tomorrow with more updates and discussions on, you know, the latest news in tech and everything. So until then, stay curious, stay connected. I'm Chris Short. He's Christian Tejeres, and we'll see you next time.